requirements for long-time water patrols is in line with the ongoing repositioning of the Nigerian Customs Service to effectively deliver its mandate to the nation. With these vessels, I hope smugglers would no longer take advantages, advantage of Nigerian Customs Service vulnerability on water to smuggle contrabands. NCS Maritime Operative can now sell to interdict them in right at the right place at the right moment. The timing of this commissioning is strategic and as it will on the, if, add on to the immediate boosting of our own exercise that is ongoing. I'm very sure many of us here know that we have been backing on what we call Operation Swift Response, which is a code name for simply blocking our borders to ensure that illicit items are not imported into this country. Therefore, the maritime area where we are weak, by, by the grace of God, the, our senior brothers who are the Navy have been very helpful and fortified those axes. So the compliments that we are going to do is to add these ships to block those areas around the creeks, most especially, because that's where some of these miscreants maneuver their boats on a daily basis to move petroleum product, to move rice, move illicit items, including weapons and ammunition. These boats will therefore be in a position to take care of those areas where while the Navy is on the high sea, and when there's need for us to move to the high sea on information, we have the capacity and the capability to be able to do that. The NCS, as a result of recent bundling of the service, now has four marine commands, namely Western Marine, Eastern Marine, Northwestern Marine, and Northeastern Marine commands. It is therefore the result of the management that smugglers find no space to operate either on land, at the airport, or at the sea maritime level. Let me use this opportunity to thank Port Plus, Nigerian Navy, the Nigerian Navy, and all the others who have in one way or the other contributed to the procurement, self-custody, maintenance, and installation of needed equipment for the commissioning of this boat today. As we joyfully commission these vessels today, we are not unmindful of challenges that may necessitate the assistance of the Nigerian Navy from time to time. Let me therefore, like Oliver Twist, request the kind assistance of the more experienced sister agency, the Nigerian Navy. Should we come along calling for any technical or any other requirement that will keep these vessels selling in the interest of the nation? On this note, I thank the Chief of, I want to take especially, thank the Chief of Naval Staff for his continuous support. Without the Navy, these vessels cannot be seaworthy. Without the weapons you see mounted on them, these vessels cannot move out of the creek. And therefore, I want to especially thank the Chief of Naval Staff and all the members of the Nigerian Navy for their continuous support. And I also urge you to please do not relent in giving us that support, both technical and otherwise. To the Customs Marine officers and men, I charge you to make good use of this vessel to cripple water waste smuggling. And let me here reiterate the one key thing that is important in every management of a machine or equipment is maintenance. It's key to maintaining these boats, I therefore will hold you responsible for anything that happens to these boats, these, these vessels, because so much money has been invest, invested in it, and we have so much money invested in your training. What we expect of you is the proper management of this vessel for, for us to gain and take the benefit of its availability in our own arsenal. Let me also say this. The NSA who is here seated with us is presently the coordinator 
of the Operation Swift response. And I want to reiterate that that operation, having gone 22 days from the time of inception, has met tremendous success. Success in the sense that we are beginning to get our neighbors to listen to us. In the past, all the smuggling that we see coming into this country are not from the high seas or from heaven. They come from our neighbors. The weapons, the rice, illicit items, drugs are all coming from our neighbors. And I believe that with the guidance of NSA, we were able to craft this operation. And this is its first of its kind. And I must, at this juncture, thank the entire members of the armed forces, the security, the intelligence community, and the paramilitary. Because this is the first unique operation whereby all of us, all of us are involved in doing one thing, one thing, and that is blocking our own international interests. I give you a, a rundown. Mr. President is of the view that if our neighbors is in their national interest to allow illicit goods transit from their own countries to our own country so that they can collect transit money, it is in our national interest to ensure that we block it. And that's exactly what we are doing. So I once again, since here I have all the representatives of the service chiefs, I want to thank you most profoundly for the commitment of your men. We're going around and we'll be meeting them. The, their morals are high, they are committed, and they believe they are doing social and uh, national service. And I want you to encourage them and please ensure that their participation is continuous. Finally, I appreciate immensely the presence of guests and other distinct dignitaries for sacrificing their time and knowing that today is Thursday afternoon. It's hard to get generals out of their offices. But I'm happy that because of Nigerian Customs Service, they are here with us to share this joy of commissioning these vessels. And I do hope that God in his infinite mercy will make it easy for us in the use of this vessel. God in his infinite mercy will give us the wherewithal and the wisdom to use it for the purpose for which it is invested for. Once again, thank you and God bless you all. Thank you very much. I think the Controller General of Customs deserves another round of applause. It has been approximately three and a half years since Colonel Hamed Ali retired, assumed the helm as the Controller General of Nigerian Customs Service. And much that has happened obviously encapsulates elements of promise, even though people are often open to different kinds of interpretation. No doubt, much remains to be done, and yet, without any out of contradiction and in fairness to the prevailing circumstances, Ali accomplished much that rightly qualifies to be calculated as a gain of that promise and his regime. Perhaps if other departments of government had put in 50% of what Ali got out of the Nigerian Customs Service through his uncommon public leadership style, his single-mindedness to serve, to make impact and remain above parochial ethno-cultural considerations, President Muhammad Buhari would not have to struggle so much to convince Nigerians for re-election. For the record, let us take a pigeonhole look at Ali's scorecard using the following measuring templates administration, revenue generation and seizures. Let us subsume the following subheads under administration, restoration of discipline, promotion and posting, routine deployment, punishment and reward system, as well as corporate gender balancing. For revenue generation, 
Let us look at the overall revenue generation and under seizures. Recap with this core shed of two seaport area commands, two land border area commands, two federal operations units, and the headquarters strike force. Industry observers would remember the complete state of lawlessness and high level in discipline by officers across rank and file prior to the present administration. Personnel who for whatever reasons, but mostly on an ethical ground, found themselves in positions of responsibilities and who exhibited gross misconduct and not only disrespected their superiors, but clearly disrespected protocol and procedures. Ali did not mince words when he read the riot act that all manner of misbehavior will be severely punished. Pronto, those concerned shaped into line. It did not end there. Those who exalted in ranks they were not properly given or merited quickly climbed down from their precarious heights. And that was in a matter of months after the Comptroller General took over. Nor was this necessary restoration of order and discipline achieved under tribal, political or sectional coloration, as Ali had only one official mandate, which was, and still is, reforms without bias. Ali has within three and a half years of assuming control approved two promotion exercises in 2017 and 2018 across the rank and file. These exercises, bearing minimal challenges, have been adjudged unprecedented in the history of the service. The exercises didn't end as mere routine, but produced the expected results with officers and men who performed creditably in the 2017 exercise duly promoted to the next rank, even as the 2018 exercise awaits same action. In the spirit of the reform promised, the CG has followed up by carrying out a number of postings, some at management level and others in defined comprehensive packets. Again, unlike the prior dispensation, the postings done under Ali has been adjudged credible and the fairest in over 16 years. States which had suffered systematic and criminal exclusion in promotions all benefited. An example is Quara State. This is certainly not propaganda. They are verifiable facts and anyone in doubt can check the customs promotion records. Officers without godfathers who merited promotion based on the exercise were promoted. The Ali era ended the sad history of alleged running to Abuja with money to purchase ranks. Much of the inherited institutional debts gave way under the former soldiers' reform drive. Under the reform scrubbing brush, officers who hitherto had done fraudulent ranks were forced to revert to their correct ranks. Those who played for time under the process got taken down with ignominy. Such was the unsparing totality of the Ali reform. On the other hand, officers and men who distinguished themselves in sterling performances, like those involved in bursting the serial illegal turkey guns within the period under review, got promoted to the next rank with additional letters of commendation from the CG. No sincere cleanup and reward system can better be demonstrated. Before the coming of Ali, Gender balancing remained a source of quiet murmuring, where the customs management cadre was believed to have been dominated by the men over women for a long period of time. The gentleman officer in the CG found it improper to work under such atmosphere. Thus, no sooner he acquainted himself with the rudiment of civil service demands on the matter than he launched the rebirth of gender balancing. In the light of those pioneering repairs, the Customs Service can today raise its head high, proudly, in any gathering anywhere and declare it is gender sensitive. Female officers now have a voice and strong presence in the management team of a service, courtesy of Ali. 
The CG also pledged to improve the revenue earning of the service when he came on board. During his maiden familiarization tour of commands and formations, he made it clear he would, in addition, up revenue collection, make it more transparent, and also keep a tight cap on the service financials. All things being equal, under the CG's watch, the customs revenue profile has continued to grow under increased transparent atmosphere, increased productivity and overall operational efficiency, according to the National Public Relations Officer, Deputy Controller Joseph Atta, the service collected a total of 1.4 trillion naira in 2017 and in 2018 collected a total of 1.2 trillion naira. The score sheets clearly outperformed yearly revenue collections for prayer administrations. It is instructive that Ali also raved up the services anti-smuggling operations which resulted in classical seizures of three consignments of containerized arms between 2017 and 2018. Ammunitions, assortments of fairly large quantities of illegal consignments of military hardware, over 70 containers of tramadol and other controlled drugs with more than 100 tons of foreign imported rice. Speaking on the regime of exponential improvement of the service in the past three years under Ali, the spokesman said the various reforms processes also radically raised the ICT awareness of operatives which to a very large extent impacted positively on its overall activities. Atta said the upgrade of the services electronic systems from Asikuda++ inherited by the CG into Nigeria Integrated Customs Information System 1, NICIS 1, and its further upgrade into NICIS 2 helped in blocking leakages. Atta also pointed attention to the strategic deployment of manpower strict enforcement of extant guidelines by tariff and classification officers also bolstered its performances. Last but not the least, under Ali's stewardship, is a regime of purpose-driven and robust stakeholders' engagements which raised compliance levels of players and also increased personnel's confidence in Ali's leadership example, leading logically also to increased commitment to doing what is right. In view of the continued rise in the sterling performances of the customs service under Ali, the World Customs Organization in January this year gave letters of merit awards to a number of area controllers. Instructively, the beneficiaries are those who have made the most record in anti-smuggling operation and revenue generation.